Hi there, this is Ranjit and this is a special video where Hugo Barra does a teardown of the Xiaomi Mi 5 and it was a very long video, it was a 43 minute video but I've cut down some parts and brought it down to about 31 minutes. So if you're a really geeky kind of a person who likes to know what is inside a modern smartphone like a Xiaomi Mi 5, then you might like this video. I hope you like it. Um, all right guys, so should we get started? Yeah. Uh, I've got a Mi 5 here and we're gonna um, dig right in. Um, first of all, to, uh, to get the, uh, the 3D glass uh, back cover here, I have a very, very high-end tool uh, that I'm going to use. So this is actually quite similar to, uh, to Mi 4 uh, and it just comes right out. Uh, there it is. Um, so, uh, this is basically, uh, uh, you know, a, a piece of glass of so Gorilla Glass Four. Uh, it's actually quite light uh, when you when you play with it, and what you see here in the back um, is just a surface to spread heat, right? So, when a device is as compact as this, as this, you want to have uh, heat spread in the most evenly possible way. Um, so that's why we have uh, uh, this this film here applied against um, the back cover. Yeah. Uh, and there's just one sort of attachment point right here, which you can see. So that attaches uh, to the device. So we're going to set this aside. Um, so this is the inside um, of, um, of Mi 5. And before I, I start taking screws off, I just wanted to maybe point out a few things. Um, as with Redmi Note 3, uh, and certainly all of our flagships um, uh, since uh, Mi Note, uh, we use um, uh, what's called a laser direct structuring or LDS technique for the antenna. Um, you guys heard of LDS? Uh, so LDS is, um, is, is a technique that's been around for a couple of years and that's used in flagship devices. Redmi Note 3 was the first uh, Redmi series device where we used this technique and that's basically for antenna development. So if you guys look at this area here, basically all of the gray areas on the back of the device on, on the inside, uh, these are all antennas. Um, the way this works, it's, um, uh, it's basically a, like a thermoplastic material um, that's, uh, that's applied um, and you coat it with, um, uh, with this metal plastic additive um, and that um, uh, is sensitive to laser. So um, the manufacturing process, in the manufacturing process you basically laser sensitize this area and then you essentially bathe it with this um, uh, sort of metallic additive which then sticks to the surface. So this is kind of like a metallic coat of paint um, that is applied uh, and which serves as the antenna, as the primary antenna. Um, what you're looking at here is the, uh, is the primary cellular antenna. Uh, this one is, uh, I, can't, I don't remember exactly which one it is, but one is GPS and then one is Wi-Fi Bluetooth. Uh, so that's, that's the primary antenna. And then we have um, what's called a diversity antenna. Uh, diversity uh, comes from the fact that it uses more than one route, if you will, for optimizing signal, um, which attaches the uh, actual frame, the metallic frame of the device, uh, into the antenna itself. Um, so um, uh, if you look up here, uh, you know, you'll see these, uh, these sort of isolating uh, cuts in the metal. Um, you know, this is essentially something that separates this side from this side, and you have two of them. Uh, in fact, we only need one of them. Uh, we have two for, for, so that it looks better, uh, but in reality, you only actually need one of them. So essentially what we have are two pieces of metal um, that serve as separate antennas. So you use one for cellular and one for Wi-Fi Bluetooth. GPS does not need a diversity antenna. Um, so you see here the same thing on the bottom. Um, but this is done for, for symmetry. We only really need one of the cuts to be uh, active. So what you have is a combination, so diversity antenna that combines uh, this LDS structure here, right, which is this internal antenna with the metallic frame of the device to basically help with uh, reception. Uh, a few more things that I would notice, uh, note here. Um, you guys see this area right here? This is the, uh, this is the NFC antenna. We didn't talk about NFC yesterday. Uh, but this is basically the NFC antenna. And um, if I were to peel this off, uh, I'll show you what it looks like. Um, I have a, another piece here um, where I basically um, started to peel this off. So 
So you can see that, right? You, it's like a, basically a loop, um, uh, a metallic loop, kind of like an RFID tag, if you've, if you've pulled uh, RFID tags apart. Um, so that's the NFC uh, antenna right there. Uh, and then what you'll notice later, uh, there's a reason why the, uh, the uh, cover of the uh, camera is done uh, in this metallic material. It's purely because we needed it to be so thin that plastic wasn't enough. Um, so that's why the camera itself is covered uh, with this metallic uh, uh, cover because the camera module is what determines the thickness of the phone uh, and therefore we wanted the basically to push things as tightly as possible which meant that the cover of the a PCB uh, that's plastic was too thick so that's why part of part of it is actually metallic on this side here I have this really cool uh, surface here this is a metallic surface I can just rest the screws there pretty cool right no it's not uh, my FC kit is there Okay. You was gonna step up. <laughs> oh, this is so good. Okay. Um, so this is the. Oh, I have one more screw left, which is the most critical one, <laughs> right there, the MI screw. So this is, of course, um, it's covered with an adhesive. Um, if you remove it, of course, we will know that you removed it, and this voids your warranty. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and take off the cover here. Of the, this is a sub PCB on the bottom. Um, so what I've done here is I've taken out the the sub PCB cover. Um, so this is a pretty intricate piece of plastic. Uh, the least of which reason is the fact that it has the um, the antenna, the LDS antenna, sort of painted on it uh, right here, uh, with the pins that connect it back to the main PCB. The other thing that I would mention about this is this is the speaker box. Um, so the speaker box is in here. Um, you know, the interesting thing about speaker boxes is that you basically need a lot of room, empty room inside of the box itself. Because as you know, sound is, sound is a mechanical wave. Yeah, so this is what the speaker box looks like on the inside, um, right here. Uh, so the speaker itself is this part. Yeah, so this, the speaker itself is this part. And we have, um, uh, this is basically looking at it on the inside, and then we have this area here, uh, which is basically like a kind of like a, a powdery foam uh, that creates an empty room so that you can actually push air out. Um, so that's what it looks like on the inside here. This is the sub PCB uh, cover. Uh, so looking at it over here, um, this is our uh, USB uh, Type C connector. And what's interesting about this connector, if you were to look at it um, carefully, is that it's actually pretty well encapsulated. It's pretty well enclosed. Um, and the reason is it's the biggest opening that we have on the device, um, meaning if it's relatively easy for water to get in there. Um, so this is a pretty well encapsulated uh, unit, if you will, that is uh, pretty water resistant. Uh, one of the things that we do, of course, when we're servicing a device is we know, um, we try to figure out the reason why uh, it may have gone defective. So you'll see a couple of these white dots, um, and these are water detector. So if water comes anywhere near this surface, it turn, it changes color. So that's how we know that there was a water damage, uh, which is pretty important for, uh, for our, uh, you know, after sales operation. Um, I'm going to take out this piece here. Uh, and what that'll allow me to do uh, is take out this guy right here. Any guesses as to what this might be, this piece here? Yeah, so this is a um, this is a pretty cool um, piece. This is um, a linear vibrator. Uh, I'm gonna put it down here. Uh, so normally, what you have on phones is a rotational or radial vibrator. Um, this one is linear, uh, and it basically vibrates uh, in a direction opposite to the surface of the display. And the point of this is to create uh, when you're it's in your pocket or it's in you know. In the, even when you're holding in your hand, it creates movement basically in, in like in this direction here, right? So uh, it kind of vibrates this way. Uh, and this, of course, if it's in a pocket, that means that the phone will tend to do something like this, right? I'm exaggerating it, um, but it's, it's what gives you a 
more noticeable haptic without uh, a huge uh, uh, component inside of the foam. Um, so that's the linear vibrator. Uh, I'm not going to go into a lot more details here because um, we don't have time. I'm just going to go ahead and take out the PCB. All right, there's one other screw left here, which is this guy over here. And I'm told this is a non-magnetic screw. The reason being it's too close to the camera. Uh, and because of the OIS motor, if it was a heavily magnetizable screw, it could potentially create problems. So I actually can't pick it up with a, with a magnet on the tip of the screwdriver. So I actually have to take that out. Maybe. Just double checking that I took out all the screws. Looks like I did. So I'm going to go ahead and take out the PCB cover here. So like I said earlier, if we take a close look at this, you know, the part that covers um, the, uh, the camera is very thin. Can you see that? Can you see how much thinner it is? Just this part right here. All right, so... Um, uh, so we've got the entire PCB right here, and what we've done um, is, because we have all these uh, protective shields that don't allow you to see the component, is I've actually stripped off a separate PCB, and, and I've got it right here, uh, so you guys can take a look at it. Um, so this is the main PCB of the device. In fact, this is the, uh, this is the part that faces up. Uh, some of the key components here, let me look at the other side first, because it's actually easier to understand. Um, so obviously this is the dual SIM slot right here. Um, and then you've got um, quite a bit of RF related stuff here and on the other side. Uh, we've got more uh, LTE bands on this device than we've had on any other product we've ever made. So a lot of the uh, engineering work here went into trying to fit in you know, as tightly as possible um, um, all of these different uh, components that you need to support each band. So it's a combination of, of components that, that, you're, that are required for each band, in addition to shaping the antenna itself. You see a watermark uh, water detector there as well. Uh, an interesting thing that you, you would have come across, of course, in this industry fairly often is how uh, processor and memory are put together. Uh, when you're operating at the level of performance that you need out of a processor like Snapdragon 820, the coupling between this, the, the memory uh, and the processor is really, really important, right? You're operating at such a high level of performance that anything you do to bring the memory closer to the processor actually matters. The travel distance between the processor and the memory where data is being, you know, fetched back and forth is very, very critical. So the way we do that, in fact, the way that the industry does it is you actually stack the SOC, the chipset itself, with um, the memory. So the first time, the first thing I'm looking for when I open this device is where is the Snapdragon 820? I want to see it. Well, it's actually hidden right underneath this guy. Uh, this is the this is the uh, this is the RAM, uh, and the processor is tucked in right underneath it. So if I were to remove this, uh, of course I would see it. But removing this is pretty complicated because it's obviously uh, pretty tightly soldered on the surface of the on the PCB. Uh, but basically, uh, the SOC is in there. It's just underneath this guy. Uh, and that, that's why the, it's basically the shortest possible travel distance between memory and actual processor. Uh, taking a look at the other side here. Um, so um, you've got uh, RF components uh, also on this side. Um, and uh, I, would, I would point to the camera over here. Uh, it's a pretty large uh, camera module. Um, so um, what I have here is a Mi 4 uh, PCB, um, just on this side. And you can see here how, the, how small in comparison the Mi 4 camera is to the Mi 5 camera. Right? The module size uh, is noticeably different. Uh, and that's because of OIS. Right? You literally have to have room uh, in here um, to be able to let the, the, the um, let me just pen, pen this down like that. So you have to have room in here to allow the sensor to move. So let me just take that aside so we can focus on this nicely. All right, so you need to be able to allow the entire thing to travel uh, in two dimensions here so that it can compensate 
you know, for movement in this direction or for movement in this other direction as well. It's actually really, really cool. And you can actually see uh, this, if you pay really close attention um, to the device, you can actually see it moving. Uh, it's pretty cool uh, when you are actually, uh, the camera is actually turned on. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna take out the PCB. So this is, um, this cable here connects the antenna all the way from the bottom um, to, um, uh, to the main PCB. The way this works basically is these three pins here, uh, they connect to the antenna, the LDS antenna, uh, which is on the top here. So from the antenna, through these uh, three pins, through basically this trace path right here that's inside of the sandwiched sub-PCB over to this cable. Uh, that's where you basically have your wireless signal travel uh, from the LDS antenna and the diversity antenna into the, into the PCB. So we'll disconnect that. Uh, then you have these two connectors here. Uh, this one is for the display uh, and this one is for the battery. I'm oh, sorry, this is one for the display, this is one for the sub-PCB. So the rest of the components here, including the USB um, uh, and, uh, and the speaker, they are connected uh, through basically this cable you see here in a second. And this one is what connects the display. Um, so what I'm gonna do first uh, is I'm gonna connect the battery. The battery is this guy right here. There you go. Battery is now disconnected. However, I cannot take out the battery uh, until I've taken out the PCB, and you see why in a second. Um, so I'll disconnect this guy here with my left hand. Let's see if that works. Maybe I'll just use my nail. Okay, so that's off. Uh, I'm gonna do the other one. That's off as well. Okay, so hopefully this. Oh, there's a couple more that I have to disconnect here. So this is um, what connects to the side buttons on the device, which are here. Um, so I've disconnected that guy. Nice. Okay. Okay, SIM tray's out. Thanks, John. That was a good catch. So I'm gonna hand over the PCB. It's right here. Uh, you've already seen what the PCB looks like uh, when it's kind of fully stripped. Yeah, so that this is basically what it looks like um, as soon as you've taken out. Um, so a couple things to notice here. Um, we This is basically, uh, if you guys are used to assembling computers, this is good old thermal paste, um, which uh, is actually somewhat toxic, so I probably shouldn't play with it too much. Uh, and then here we have a double layer. Um, to isolate uh, the some of these components. These are power amplifiers on the, on the left here, on the right here, sorry, um, both of these guys. Um, so this um, this is a pretty soft, um, like a pretty, oh, sorry. This is a pretty soft um, kind of foamy um, isolator. And it's uh, foamy so that uh, it can resist pressure from the top uh, and not cause problems underneath. And then what you have here is just regular thermal paste, right? So uh, we basically put a little cushion um, on top of the thermal paste here uh, to make it make sure that it's uh, pretty, pretty uh, well taken care of. Uh, and that's thermal paste. Of course, if I strip that off, uh, basically you got you get to the memory and the SOC uh, right underneath. Yeah. Um, so let's go back to this guy. So I'm going to try to take off the battery now. Um, so the battery is a little bit interesting. Um, the the way that the battery is um, placed is actually with glue, and but it's a glue that only um, only resists and works in one direction. Um, so if I try to basically pull up the battery, the glue holds it pretty tightly. Um, but if I need to replace the battery, of course, I, I have to be able to take it out without a major amount of effort. So we've designed this really cool, really cool glue system um, that's actually a strip that only works as glue in one direction, such that I can actually pull it out. It's pretty awesome. See, I'm just pulling it out here. 
and I can pull it out pretty, 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 a lot of force. Can you zoom out for me, please? John. You see this? Pretty cool, right? <laughs> so that's one side. Uh, now I'm going to remove the other side. Right here. Special sounding fact. Okay. So... And now the battery, okay. and now the battery just comes out. Simple, right? Um, so now we have, uh, like I said earlier, uh, this is the connector for the sub-PCB, uh, and this is the connector for the display. Um, I'm not going to tear this down further, because there's not really much left to do here until we get to the display. Uh, but rather than take out this internal frame to show you the display, I'm actually going to bring out a fresh new display for you guys to see. So the display is one of the biggest breakthroughs um, for this device. Um, and the reason is we wanted a display that was extraordinarily bright. Um, so this is what the display looks like. By the way, it's um, the whole thing without the glass um, is 1.1 millimeters thick. So it's actually really, really, really thin without the glass, right? So here you see the glass and then you see uh, the, the entire display assembly behind it. Um, so what I'm going to do um, is peel off the display a little bit for you guys to see. Um, and by the way, this is one of the most expensive parts. This is the second most expensive part of the phone. Of course, the most expensive part is the SOC. Um, so uh, there's about 12 layers inside of this 1.1 millimeter thing. 12 layers. The display is kind of like a cake uh, in many ways. So I'm going to first take out, this is purely a protective plastic cover. Um, it doesn't really do anything. Um, uh, and what you're looking at here, uh, this super, super shiny surface, uh, this, is, this is basically a reflector, uh, a reflector uh, piece. And this is uh, actually pretty important. Um, it, the, maximum, the more reflectivity, of course, the more light it'll bounce uh, out of the display. So this is actually made by, by 3M. Uh, it's the best reflector in the world. Uh, the highest quality reflector in the world, uh, which is why it looks, it's so thin, it's like a very, very thin, um, you know, kind of sheet of metal, very, very thin, but it's almost like a perfect mirror uh, in many ways. Uh, and you're looking at the underside here. Uh, let me see if I can peel this off. So, you see that? And look how beautiful this is. Really, really, really beautiful. Um, it's like a perfect mirror. It's gorgeous. Uh, so this is the reflector uh, right here. Let's just bring that out in the picture. Uh, these are the LEDs um, right here. Um, and it's four, eight, twelve, sixteen. So we're right. It is in fact sixteen. Uh, and I think you can understand how. Um, we couldn't have done uh, 16 if the display was a little bit narrower, right? So we made the display slightly wider uh, by going to uh, 5.15 so that we could fit more LEDs. Um, the way that we laid out these LEDs uh, and how close they are to each other uh, was actually the result of a lot of R&D. Um, because if they are too close to each other, they can actually um, heat up and they can start to fail. Uh, I said there are 12 layers. I'm not going to be able to peel all of them off, but I'm going to try to keep going for you guys. The next layer is what's called a light guide, or an LCP. Uh, basically, you have the light from the LED coming in in this direction, right? Because the LEDs are pointing in this way. So you've got light essentially going up on the phone here. But what you need is you need it to go out, right? You need it to go that way. So the light guide is this really intricate um, uh, layer that I'm going to peel off right now. Um, that basically 
uh, turns the light around uh, and forces it out in the opposite direction. And by the way, if any of it comes out this way, you've got the reflector, right? And the reflector bounces it back in the other direction. So basically what the light guy does is get light that would be coming in this direction to essentially turn around and either go up or go down. If it goes up, fantastic. If it goes down, it'll just bounce back up and come back up. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take out this, um, this is just a frame. Uh, this is one of these things that um, I showed in my slide yesterday that you need to have, uh, which is why you can't have a, bezel, a fully bezel-free display. I'm not going to, just going to cut that here. All right, so that allows, um, so this is the light guide I'm pulling out here. Um, so this is kind of like those, um, you know, lenses that you hold up. Do you know what I'm talking about? I don't know how to call those. Um, it's um, pretty common for uh, as a, like a kid's toy. So this is pretty thin. Um, I'm guessing this is about 0.3 millimeters. It's actually the thickest part of the display. Uh, and what it does, like I said earlier, is it basically turns the light around. Um, so it's a pretty interesting surface um, that just basically guides the light out. Um, so this is also um, uh, basically top of you know top of the uh, industry suppliers. We get this from Omron, Omron and N and B, uh, who make these light guides. So this is be the best light guide in the world. The next uh, layer here, that's a really thin one, um, is called a diffuser. Uh, essentially, you've got light, pretty sharp light coming out. Um, and what the diffuser does is just spread that a little bit more evenly, right? So this is essentially a semi-transparent um, layer that does exactly what I just said. It basically helps diffuse light. Uh, it's really, really thin. Um, the, uh, the next layer is a prism. A prism, P-R-I-S-M, uh, basically straightens the light. So you've got light coming up, it gets diffused, so it's no longer concentrated. Uh, and then you got to this layer, and it basically makes the light go out straight. Uh, it's essentially what the prism does. Um, so I'm going to stop peeling out here, because uh, it becomes really, really hard. Yeah, not good for your fingers. And uh, the next layer down, right, so, so I diffuser the prism, and then we're done with the what's called the backlight unit. Basically, these five layers that I just talked you through, all they do is get light that's coming one way, to go out, straight out through the phone, basically in parallel um, uh, rays of light. Right, so you've got beautiful light coming out. Then on top of that, you have the LCD. Right, the LCD, this technology that you guys are familiar with, is essentially where the pixels are. Right, pixels that are turned on or turned off. Um, you've got you know three uh, little windows per pixel: uh, one for red, one for green, one for blue. And then you apply voltage to those, and then they're you know more or less open. Uh, I think we've got 24 bits per pixel, or is it 32? Um, so anyway, so there's varying levels of voltage that you can apply, and then the light goes through. So this is a display that I previously destroyed, um, and here you can begin to see the LCD. You have to be very careful because the LCD uh, material is actually toxic as well, so that's why I didn't want to go further. Um, but it's essentially, I don't know if you can see it, uh, but it's basically in here. Right, so this piece over there, uh, that's the LCD. And you have to be very, very careful once again because it, it, uh, it can be a little bit toxic. Um, also attached to the display is the display controller, uh, which is the piece on the bottom that you're going to see. It's a little chip uh, that controls the display. Um, that's basically what sets the voltage on. Let me just show it quickly. Okay, um, right here. Uh, this is the display controller right there. Uh, and this is what basically applies voltage to the LCD so that you can actually see the image as desired. There you go. Um, the result of this display is the 600 nit, um, or I think one of, our, one of our reviewers calculated 628 uh, nits, which is really, really, really extraordinarily bright. Um, if we were to use a 2K display, um, the assembly would be uh, thicker. Uh, it would not be 1.1 millimeters. Um, and um, uh, you'd also have uh, lower brightness, just given the nature of the LCD and the fact that it lets out more, less light. Uh, so with a 1080p display, we were able to get to 600 nits. 
regarding the display brightness uh, when we move to the sun uh, does it boost up over 600 or the 600 is max Okay. Yeah. The other cool thing about this display is that it can go down to 0.7. Yes. Okay, so okay, great. Which is nice. much, much um, darker than any, any AMOLED display. Actually, yeah. It's actually one advantage in the other direction, right? Um, well, in general, the range of brightness of, uh, of uh, um, uh, you know, an IPS display uh, like the one we have is much wider in both directions than an AMOLED display. Um, so that advantage as well. Okay, so this is um, removing the sub PCB here so you guys can see um, the fingerprint sensor. It's actually right there. Um, but I cannot take it out without removing this entire internal metallic frame. Uh, but it's just down there. And if you listen, I don't know if you can hear the click. click. Right, that's the little clicking capsule basically a bent a metallic cover that always offers resistance. Um, that's where you get the clicky. And, uh, and you've got the uh, fingerprint sensor control right there. That's that little guy. Cool. And that is our Teda. Thank you.